Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we're going to be finding the area enclosed between a cardioid and a circle. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. Let's look at how we find the area of a polar region between a cardioid and a circle. To do this, I've sketched the polar graph of R equals 2 minus 2 cos theta and a circle. R equals 1. Most of the circle lies within the cardioid. The circle is centered at the origin and has a radius of 1. The red shaded region is the area we are going to find. We know that the area across a polar region is given by the double integral across the region of infinitesimally small slices of area denoted by dA. This translates to the region being defined by an inner integral which integrates in the r direction between two values of r, and an outer integral, which defines the region as we rotate about theta between two values of theta. The infinitesimally small pieces of area are defined by r dr d theta. So for the inner integral, the lower limit is at the boundary of the circle and the cardioid, so where r is equal to 1, and the upper limit extends the polar curve of the cardioid, so where r is equal to 2 minus 2 cos theta. To find the limits of theta, let's look at how the polar region is plotted using a graph plotting tool. Using the graph plotting tool, I've plotted the circle, and as we can see, it has a radius of 1. As I begin to plot the cardioid, as we can see, it begins at the origin and first cuts the circle at 60 degrees, or pi by 3 radians. At 180 degrees, or pi radians, half the cardioid is complete. At 300 degrees, or 5 pi by 3 radians, it once again cuts the circle. And at 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians, the cardioid is complete. The region we are interested in is between the points at which the cardioid and the circle intersect. So, to manually determine the limits of theta, we need to find the values of theta when the circle and cardioid intersect which occurs when the equation of the circle is equal to the equation of the cardioid, so when the r values are equal. Setting one equation equal to the other, we have 1 equals 2 minus 2 cos theta. Rearranging this equation gives 1 equals 2 cos theta, and then dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we're left with a half equals cos theta. And now if we look at a graph of cos of theta, we ask, at what values of theta is the cos of theta equal to a half? As we can see, the first value of theta where the cos of theta is equal to a half is 60 degrees or pi by 3 radians. And if we continue in a positive direction, the second point at which the cosine of theta is equal to a half is 5 pi by 3 radians or 300 degrees. So the two values of theta where the cardioid intersects with the circle are at pi by 3 radians and at 5 pi by 3 radians. These values provide the limits of integration of our outer integral. So the limits of integration of our outer integral are from theta equals pi by 3 radians to theta equals 5 pi by 3 radians. Now we've formulated our double integral, we can begin the evaluation process. So beginning with our inner integral, we want to integrate between r is equal to 1 and r is equal to 2 minus 2 cos theta, r dr. The antiderivative of r with respect to dr is r squared divided by 2, and we need to evaluate that for r between 1 and 2 minus 2 cos theta. So plugging in the upper limit of 2 minus 2 cos theta in for r, we get 2 minus 2 cos theta, all squared, divided by 2. And then subtracting the lower limit, where we plug in 1 for r, we have minus one half. If we expand the bracket and divide by two, we get two minus four cos theta plus two cos squared theta, and that is minus one half. Subtracting minus a half, we're left with three divided by two minus four cos theta plus two cos squared theta. And moving on to our outer integral, we want to integrate between the limits of theta equals pi divided by three to theta equals 5 pi by 3, 3 over 2, minus 4 cos theta, plus 2 cos squared theta, d theta. 
If we now integrate term by term, the antiderivative of 3 over 2 with respect to theta is 3 over 2 theta, and we need to evaluate that between pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3. And the antiderivative of minus 4 cos theta with respect to theta is minus 4 sine theta. And we need to evaluate that between pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3. And to find the antiderivative of 2 cos squared theta with respect to theta, we can use the double angled trig identity where cos squared theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2. If we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we're left with 2 cos squared theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta. And so the antiderivative of 1 with respect to theta is theta, which we need to evaluate between pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3. And the antiderivative of cos 2 theta with respect to theta is 1 half multiplied by sine 2 theta, which we need to evaluate between theta equals pi by 3 and theta equals 5 pi by 3. If we now substitute the upper and lower limits of theta in for each of these terms and subtract the lower limit from the upper limit, we get 15 pi divided by 6 minus 3 pi divided by 6 minus, and in bracket, 4 multiplied by the sine of 5 pi by 3 minus 4 multiplied by the sine of pi by 3 plus 5 pi by 3 minus pi by 3 plus a half multiplied by the sine of 10 pi by 3 minus a half multiplied by the sine of 2 pi by 3. Evaluating this expression, we have 15 pi by 6 minus 3 pi by 6 gives us 2 pi, then we have minus, and 4 multiplied by sine of 5 pi by 3 minus 4 multiplied by the sine of pi by 3 gives us minus 4 root 3 over 2 and minus 4 root 3 over 2, and then 5 pi by 3 minus pi by 3 gives us 4 pi by 3, and a half multiplied by the sine of 10 pi by 3 minus a half multiplied by the sine of 2 pi by 3 gives us minus root 3 over 4 and minus root 3 over 4. And if we evaluate this, we get our final answer of 10 pi by 3 plus 7 multiplied by root 3 over 2.